Right, let's speak to Professor Glenda Gray, the president of the South African Medical Research Council. She's also the lead investigator when it comes to the Johnson & Johnson Sisonke COVID-19 vaccine trial. Prof, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. So we saw more vaccines arrive today. We know in total we're supposed to get 500,000. Where do we stand now? This is our second last batch. We will get, we've got um, 90,000 uh, today and we'll get the rest 110,000 on Wednesday. And so we expect to complete our enrollment of the Sasanke vaccine program. Um, we'll study uh, towards the end of April, early May. Um, there's a huge demand for these vaccines and so we've already started to make preparations to send them out so we can start ramping up that, um, vaccinations and making sure we can complete this program by the end of April, early May. Yeah, so of course there has been some delays. We know that these uh, vaccines that arrived today were supposed to come on Saturday. What's causing the delays and how does it affect that deadline you have? These, um, these delays, um, one can't help. There's, you know, we, can't, we don't have direct flights from New York, and so we had to go via Europe. That delayed it, and it's obviously much safer to bring in two large consignments like this separately in case something goes wrong with the first consignment. And so by the end of this week, we, we will have deployed um, the last 200,000 vaccines to all parts of South Africa. In the last leg of our vaccination program, we're going to be penetrating the Eastern Cape, more rural areas, northern KwaZulu-Natal, and trying to make sure that um, people who uh, were, mi were missed in the first parts of the program have access. And so we're working to try and mop up um, all healthcare workers um, in the rural areas, as well as um, certain groups of people like uh, people who work in the blood bank um, and pharmacists who haven't had access yet. We're trying to make sure that these, these healthcare workers get the vaccine uh, uh, towards the end of, of April. There's been much criticism about the slow pace in which healthcare workers have been inoculated when it comes to these vaccines. Why is it taking so long? What's the delay there? Well, these are under study conditions. Um, you know, we're not, we're not, we don't have an authorized product. Uh, this is all under clinical trial. When you, do, when you roll out a big program like this, you have to do it under regulatory and ethical oversight, uh, which means that all the vaccines have to be administered um, and overseen by research groups. We have 31 research groups in the country, and so they have been deployed all over the country to roll this out. And so they've done phenomenally well. And so to, this is a, the biggest um, large-scale phase three open-label study, and the fact that we've already done um, almost 300,000 healthcare workers actually in, in, such, in a few weeks is, is actually an amazing pace uh, for this kind of work. And so I think we do need to congratulate our researchers who've worked hand-in-hand -hand with the province to make sure this happens. There's a huge, a huge demand, and um, the, the sites work tirelessly to deliver these vaccines under study conditions. And no doubt there's been lots of hard work to get this right, Prof. Uh, this weekend, we were told that only 40 people were vaccinated. That doesn't sound anything that we should be boasting about. So there's some concern, right? There's some issue in terms of how people are inoculated. And are you addressing that? So, well, there were no, we, we had used up just about all our supplies. And so we didn't even expect any vaccinations to occur over the weekend. Um, so as these vaccines arrive in the country, they get deployed. So we have not wasted one day. The moment the vaccines are in the country, they get deployed all over the country. As I said, um, these vaccines have come in in, um, you know, over the uh, 40,000, between 40,000 and 80,000 at time. As they come in, they get directly deployed and utilized. So I think that we need to understand that there's obviously a huge demand for these vaccines, which is good, and that these vaccines are utilized as rapidly as they come into the country. And so this is the reason why you see that um, as we wait for the next consignment, um, uh, there will be a, a slight delay uh, or a slight decrease in vaccination, but this will, this will pick up and we won't lose any time uh, because the vaccines came in today. Yeah. So we know that the Sosonke trial is ending. What happens next then? Well, the next, the next phase will be the official rollout, uh, where, we, where the J&J &J and the Pfizer vaccines will be, will be, um, will be de deployed. Obviously, the rest of the healthcare workers that went part of the Sosonke will be prioritized, and there will be deployments of the Pfizer and the J&J &J vaccines to various parts of the country. This is the aim of the National Department to use the J&J vaccines in more rural areas because of the single dose and to concentrate um, the Pfizer in urban areas because of the cold chain issues.
Yeah. And, and let's just talk about, uh, you know, the way forward when it comes to Johnson & Johnson. We know now that Aspen's now manufacturing Johnson & Johnson vaccines, and we've, uh, of course, received approval from Safra for the vaccines to be used here. That in itself means we'll get it much faster than we did, for, and we don't have to wait any longer for it to be shipped in or flown in from abroad, right? Correct. There'll be 400 million uh, vaccines uh, by J&J &J deployed into the whole continent of Africa. And so Aspen will play a large role in making sure that um, 400 million vaccines get to Africa from the from from the J and J uh, program, and Aspen will contribute greatly to that. And lastly, in terms of the side effects that you have noticed from this Johnson and Johnson vaccine, anything to be concerned about, or just the regular side effects? So this is a reactogenic vaccine. We take note of the the, the global concern of, of thromboembolic events, rare thromboembolic events. Um, we've, been, we've rolled out just almost 300,000 vaccines. We continue, these rare events may only be seen once we're into the millions. And so it's very important that we continue to monitor the safety of these vaccines and that, and that healthcare workers and anyone who takes vaccines, um, if they have a side effect, that they report these to the safety desk. Um, we will only start to see rare side event, events effects once we have millions of people vaccinated. And so I think it's important at a global level to collaborate to make sure that we can see uh, what's happening in other parts of the world and if there are side effects we can work closely with everybody to make sure that we understand them and can do the necessary investigations to attribute causality.